Okay, so we're live. Welcome back to the Magic Minds podcast. You're watching and listening to the Liberties number one podcast. Yup, the Liberties. Yup, the flats. <laughs> On the show today, I'm joined by my pal, an inspirational woman, a powerful woman within the Liberties community, Lisa Callagher. How are you, Lisa? How are you? Yeah. How are you getting on? You up there, flats? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Are you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, before we get into that, I just want to thank podcastdublin.ie. We're back in the studios here. They run an incredible service. Matt is behind the, the camera over there doing the magic. Steph, Steph is probably out in his office practicing Brazilian dancing or something that he's into, being an Italian uh, schmood mover. Uh, but look, on a serious note, if you are interested in starting your own podcast or any f- uh, film production, give Podcast Dublin a shout. The services that they provide is studio, a beautiful studio, an amazing studio, and the services. They also do training for anyone who wants to start up their own podcasts. And they do podcast editing, video editing. If you've done a podcast at home and you want them to clean it up, help you get that out there, these are your guys. So give them a shout, podcastdublin.ie. Bam, bam, bam. Now, to the start of the show, I'm absolutely going to make you cringe here. I know, <laughs> I know. I, I can't believe the butterflies I have now sitting here, but now I'll be crying. Right. But you do exactly what people do the opposite to. You feel the butterflies, you feel the nerves, and you step into it. That's why I've asked you to come on the show. Okay. You are an inspiration to me. You and Sam just started up the pot or started up the, the charity Shannon's Hope Line. In 2014, after your niece took her life by suicide, mm. you went on and done an amazing thing. You're a powerful woman in our community, and you inspire me. And I think you're deadly. And I'm delighted to sit back down with you again. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is our second interview. The last yeah. one we done, the 4th of June, 2018. In your flat. Yeah. Yeah, we're little Sandy, yeah. We're little GoPro camera. Yeah, just coming up on the bus, like I was like, God, it's amazing now, like how far you have come too. And then I said, So we're going into a studio now and it was in your flat. Like there was no even video. We were just talking into what was it we were talking into? Just the mic, wasn't it? Yeah. So, no, like I had it I I don't know, I had one of the I just had a podcast mic. I just put it down on a box. Yeah. A box yeah. that a lad in the in the job made for me. Just stuck it on the box, we pressed record. Yeah. And we went for it. And it was the start. That was number ten, the interview. Was it? Yeah. Ten, yeah. I know. I know, it was great, yeah. Yeah. I've known you for twenty five years. Yeah. And to see how far you have come as a human as a woman in my community, it kind of blows me mind. Because you think us growing up, the, the, yeah. the stuff we used to do and the carry on. Yeah. Yeah. And look where you are now. Do you ever take a, a look back, as Steve Jobs says, we can only join the dots when we look back. Do you ever look back at your life and go, ah, I'm super proud of myself. Is that something you would say? I'd say, yeah. I'd say over the last year, I've kind of like, you know, uh, yeah, i am see, yeah, seeing the water. Sandra and I are doing and seeing what we do in the community as well. Yeah, I, I am. I'm very proud of it. Proud of Shannon's Hope Flying. Yeah. Yeah. I just took a picture for this to show art. <laughs> that was it. No, I think it's really important. <laughs> Women need to hear this. Men need to hear this. You t- seen Young that Gala. picture. You seen that picture. And what did you say? I said, I look gorgeous. You do look fucking gorgeous. Have you got the filter on it? <laughs> no filter. Zero filter. And that delight- was a joke. <laughs> I was delighted to hear you say that. Yeah. You yeah, recognise yeah. we look good in that picture. And where we grew up as children, as teenagers, you wouldn't say that. I uh, know. You'd be slayed if you say that. Do you recognise how well you look? I look great. You look great. We're just a lovely picture. Yeah. No, I was I, delighted to hear you say that. Yeah. No, I have learned to love myself. Over Beautiful. Because like, when, when I was younger, I used to think I was, uh, I was ugly. I didn't think much of myself I suffered with my mental health as well uh, yeah and then I, I ended up with it. my, my favourite uh, story was the ugly duckling that grew into a beautiful swan I even say and actually my sister Stella bought me the book for my birthday last year and then I got a tattoo I actually got a tattoo of a swan as well because of the way I used to think of myself and I didn't think I was worth much and yeah I never thought much of myself and then as I got older, then I've I've learned to love myself now. It's great. Yeah, oh. it, it is a good feeling. It it's is. a great feeling. Even to hear you say, I was buzzing. Because like you, I would have thought I was an ugly duckling. Yeah. My favourite song years ago was uh, Phil Collins. Yeah. Take a look at me now. 
because I used to feel shy. And now I'm sitting in a podcast doing this interview with you. My business is going well. Da, 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 da. And I look and I say to myself, well done. Take a look at me now. Yeah, yeah. I was going out there two weeks ago and I looked in the mirror. And I caught myself in the mirror and I thought, wow, I look good. Yeah. Aesthetically. And then I said to myself, you've turned into the man that you've always wanted to be. Yeah. Kind, yeah. compassionate, helpful. And then obviously I thought I looked great as well. <laughs> you did look great, man. <laughs> Isn't it great to be able to say that? Yeah, it took you long enough to fucking yeah. say it. But isn't it great to be able to do that? Yeah. And then yeah. our kids see us, Larkin's in over there, my daughters hear me saying it. Yeah. They see us loving ourselves, yeah. doing kind things for ourselves, treating ourselves the way we should be and the way we always should have been. Yeah. And yeah. then we can inspire them to love themselves, yeah. isn't it? We yeah. live on the front. Like when I do think back, I do get very emotional. Uh, when I think of myself as a child and what I taught myself, you know, I do feel really sad. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Tell us a little but, bit about that. But, um, feels okay I'd done a meditation one time uh, in a child healing and, and it was actually Louise's meditation I was doing away and... Uh, Louise Warren? Yeah, Louise, Louise Warren, yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, she said go back in the meditation. We had to go back to ourselves as 10-year-old. And I went back in the meditation and I just seen myself sitting on, on the couch and my big blue eyes and my, my innocent face and how I felt about myself. And it was just so, and I had to go up and give her a hug and tell her that everything was going to be okay. And, you know, and it was just, oh, it was just, it was the best feeling. Like, like in the meditation, giving myself a hug, saying everything's going to be okay. But it's just me heart kind of went out to, to it went out to myself, you know. What as a child, child you know? it's beautiful, isn't it? To go back to that part of you, because that's still residual. Those childlike feelings, those yeah. childlike reaction of biochemistry to the past is still there. Mm-hmm. And then for you to be the adult, the guardian, the minder of that, yeah. you went back and went, "Here, come here. Mm-hmm. I love you." And it's about loving those. Parts. Uh, it is, yeah, yeah, it is. It's incredible. Yeah. That's why I try to instill in me bias as well. You know, you can do anything and have confidence and all because I just never had that, you know. Because we grew up in an environment uh, that didn't foster that. Yeah. And I don't, you, me and you have loads of conversations. We're not interested in blaming people. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. They done their best. People yeah. done their best. Their community yeah. done their best. But it didn't serve as well. And now we're like, okay. Let's change that. Let's yeah. break the generational cycle. Yeah. Like, you don't just talk about being a good woman. You don't talk about just working hard. You're a good woman and you work hard. And kids do what we do, not what we say. Yeah. So you're inspiring from the, you're leading from the front. Yeah. 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 How's life for you at the moment? What's going on? Yeah, life is good. Life yeah. is good, yeah. Charity's going well. Uh, also uh, involved in the Liberties Running cr- Group as well. Um, that's really after taking off. Shout out to David, Jenny, and Keith. You uh, up the Neverly yeah, Road Club. Uh, you up the flats. Yeah, I had a four or five k event yesterday, and uh, asked oh, just amazing day, amazing day. Start to finish, the smiles on everyone's faces. It was just brilliant to see people who hadn't ran before running five k's. Ah, oh, brilliant! And then, yeah, we're also with the charity down. We're getting our new premises, so. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of work. So we're going to have our play therapy room and our, we're going to have another council room. So we're we're just seven years now waiting to have our own building. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's really exciting. Really have, exciting. Yeah, really exciting. As I said, I was saying to the listeners, yeah. viewers before, that we've had you on 2018. Mm. Yeah. It was our first interview with you and Sandra. Yeah. Would it be okay just to do a little step back and talk yeah. about how it all got started? We won't get too much into what we spoke about before. Just to, yeah. just to kind of remind people, in 2013, you guys started the, the charity. Tell us a little bit about why and for people. Uh, well, on the, the 24th of uh, January 2012, uh, my niece, uh, Shannon, Sandra's daughter, she died from suicide and she was only she was age 13. Um, so yeah, terrible time for us at that time, and uh, even the whole community, everyone was affected. You know, um, it was around uh, twenty fourteen, and uh, Sanja uh, said to me, 
where we do something like, because she was after like research and I think suicide. And then she, she didn't realize like how much suicide, how like young people were taking their own lives. Like it wasn't publicized. It was just through research and stuff like that. So like, Hats off to Sandy now, like she inspires me every day. I'd love you to get her on the podcast and tell her story as well. And I'm raging she's not here today. Um, but yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. But I tell you, she's she's she she's also an inspire. She inspires me every she day. Used to inspire me. She said to me one time, and she genuinely said, and I could see her in her eyes that she was happy. Yeah, I was like, wow. Yeah. Your daughter took her life by suicide, and you're now happy. Yeah. And that would be against what the social norms. Yeah. Oh, you're happy and your daughter died. That, that yeah. pressure for a woman, for a yeah. man, for someone. The same up saying, fucking, that's incredible. Yeah. No, she amazes me every yeah. day. And then Amazing. she asked me, which I was privileged, she asked me out of everyone to, did I want to come on board and uh, like help out? And I just said, yeah, straight away. So, yeah, it took us a long time behind the scenes and, Meeting different people and, you know, and people telling us we were uh, <laughs> too ambitious, what we wanted to achieve. And so we we did, we we kept going and we kept going. I think it was then 2017. I just, I gave up my job then and I said to Sandra, you know, and then we we just started by we done workshops in the Robert Emmett down in Oliver Bond there. Yeah. Uh, we done some mindfulness bullying courses and then, uh, yeah, met then Catherine who I went to school with and she was actually after setting up Mosaic Counseling. So had a meeting with her and then it just progressed from there. Then we started with the counseling service and we got a charity status in 2018. And uh, yeah, we're just growing and growing each year. And yeah, just we have our office based in the... Little Flower, uh, we've counselling, SICTA have given us a room and so Dale Street, so we play therapy and adolescence therapy there. And then Mosey Crumlin also do counselling up there for us too. Lovely. So this is why it's exciting now, getting this new building from DCC. We're going to have it all under the one roof, yeah. which will be great. We're not going to be all separated, mm-hmm. which is, it's just to, be, to build a good team. And yeah, it's just, it, it's good times ahead. What was going on for you in Suhid when someone says to you, oh, yeah, charity, yeah, you're a little bit ambitious because I know you have applied for funding. He's yeah. applied, like, you have been chasing yeah. people forever. Yeah. What was it like for you in Suhid when someone says that to you are too ambitious? <laughs> we had Sandra, we're, we're sitting in the coffee shop and, <laughs> and I was drinking coffee and then you get, we were told this, I'm not going to say who said it, but we were told this anyway and I nearly just choked on my coffee. And Sandra was just, no, but we just, we just literally walked out of the coffee shop and we just, no, we're still doing it. Like, we just, could we, uh, we get, we were a bit disappointed, like, that people kind of didn't believe in it. And they were just thinking, oh, here's now someone else setting up a charity in memory of someone that's, it's another charity. And then we were told there's enough mental health services out there. You have Jigsaw, you have Pieta House, like, yeah. Yeah, but. The waiting list, and you have primary care centres as well. But the waiting list, like even when we get parents ringing us, like and and you know, I've used services in the past myself, and I've been waiting up to a year, and you you know, and it's just being able to 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 give them that lifeline and like just saying to them, like you know, like yeah, we can we can provide the counselling for you. So it's, yeah, it's just great. Just two parts. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to one piece yeah. in a minute. If you think back on all the, I think you're going about 11 years now, aren't you? Yeah. So 11 years, right? How many times have you been told no? You know, I just want to highlight this for anyone that's interested in starting a charity, starting a business, starting, starting, starting. You just have faced no, 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 barrier, barrier, barrier. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So many times, right? Would you agree? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it was disheartening. Like, it, it really was. And you're going to different, like, people and you're asking and you're asking and then, you're getting told no and then you do question are you doing the right thing you, yeah. you know but but perseverance I mean look now you know we're helping people in the community and it's it's just great and like Shannon's name will, will live on and, and yeah. she's helping so many people like yeah. and, and it's horrible 
to what happened to Shannon for this to come about. Do you know what I mean? Like we wish that that didn't happen, but yeah, she's just she's she's helping so many people, and even like setting up Shannon's Hopeline, like it helped me with my own mental health, like and it made me understand myself more better, and it's it's just yeah. You've grown exponentially in this process. But here's the thing, you and I come from a place, not geographically, but even just in our own experience. We don't like asking for help. We don't like asking yeah, for Yeah, that's people. one thing we said. Yeah, 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 going up with your yeah, bag, no, your bag and bones. Ask, you had to ask, yeah, we hate, yeah. You, you would yeah. think, like even when I worked in the hospital, people with disability had to fight to get a medical card. Mm-hmm. Yet they had a brain injury, they hemiplegia, they're, they're you know, paralyzed on one side. And he still had to beg for a fucking medical card. Yeah. You guys have lost your niece by suicide. You're trying to start something good. Yeah. You can bridge the gap between mental health to, into other services. Because mm-hmm. not everyone's going to get into PA the house or, or jigsaw. Yeah. And you have a specific need in an area. Like counselling and that kind of stuff is still difficult for yeah. people. Yeah. And someone that sounds like you, looks like you, sounds like Sandra, looks like Sandra would make it feel safe yeah. for them to go into services, to go get help by a counsellor or psychotherapist. Yeah. And it's very much needed. Yeah. Because I've spoken to people about going to therapy and all, they're like, oh, not fucking hell. And you yeah. hear somebody with a certain accent or whether they perceive them to be on a different level to them. Mm. Where you guys can help people in their area, yeah. bridge that gap. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, no. And I think like a lot of people, because Shannon died from suicide as well, like a lot of people would think, we're very like VA to house, but we're actually not like we're early intervention, which is the key here. Like it's 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 about helping them before before that problem becomes a crisis. Brilliant. So, you know, so it yeah. it's like we're early intervention. So we deal with children like that are suffering with anxiety, like they're going through bullying, like they've like they they've no confidence in themselves, like body image. Like we, we deal with a number of issues. It's not just like if your suicidal, if your child is suicidal, yet yeah, ring Shannon's hopeline because that's kind of what Pieta House is, you know. So yeah. well, we're early intervention, and I think we kind of have to get that point across more as well, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That it's it's before all this starts. Yeah. Do you think that Shannon's hopeline and the development of the charity? Do you think it mirrors your path in life and how you have grown and how you are now at a stage? Because you getting into, you were the perfect one to start. And now you're at this point where it's growing and you've got you their offices. And you as an individual is now really coming into fruition. You're really t- like turning in and recognizing your own brilliance. Do you think that they're mirroring each other along with that? Yeah, well, like, like especially because it's mental health and counseling. Like, <laughs> when I was a teenager, I first got counseling at 15. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I just went to counselling, but I, I still didn't understand it was uh, mental health. Like, th- there wasn't that word put on it, mm. mental health. Mm. And I remember then I, uh, the the counsellor asked me to draw a picture of me, like, four pictures that came into my head. And I drew a picture of, of myself, and it was just a load of black around me. And I actually asked them, nobody even told me what the the picture meant and I actually asked the counsellor that we that we were working with and she was like you were depressed and and like I just like just like just all that because just setting up the mental health just made me realise like how much I suffered with my mental health does that make sense oh, 50%. Yeah. and counselling has helped me like in my twenties, my thirties, like you know what I mean, and I go back. Like I'm actually in counselling now. Well, like when when stuff gets stuff gets tough for me, mm-hmm. I I I go back to counselling. I never. It's two things. One is when I went to start to work in the national rehab in 2010, 13, mm-hmm. 12, 13, I couldn't walk on a journey with people that were going through disability if I wasn't willing to do the work myself. Yeah. So. I recognised that I had difficulties. I want to take my life by suicide. The same year that Shannon took her life, I was on a boat to England. Yeah. Or the year before, and I wanted to take my life by suicide. I never knew I had mental health problems. Yeah. Because no one ever talked about mental health problems. Yeah. I always hear, like, people's mad, he's a fucking lunatic, he's off, he's right yeah. there. And I had a huge drinking drug problem. So yeah. we grew up, and there wasn't that conversation. Yeah. But then when I started working in the hospital, and just like you did, 
how can I ask these people to walk with me and let me help them through rehab if I'm not willing to do the work myself Yeah. and turn into my own difficulties and reckless? Because no one said to us and we were all mental health problems. I thought that was for just lunatics. No, but I never actually heard the word mental health, if that makes sense. Like, I used to know, like, kind of, I used to know, like, oh, I don't feel right. I'm, I I don't, you know, and then me shyness and, and you know, you know, just no confidence in myself and all that. But I, I know what it stems from now, like doing the counselling and the reason why I felt like that, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you, when you do all that, that walk, that's when, like, your confidence starts building. You start, you start feeling good in yourself and when you realise why you were the way you were. Yeah. You said to me, we were having a cup of coffee. No, we weren't. We were sitting in Patrick's Park one day. Yeah. And I've, and it just it hit me because I, I recognised this in myself on time. You said to me, someone said, and I don't think I'm breaching our conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Edgar yeah. here. Okay. Uh, you says to me, someone asked you at a meeting you were at, one of these meetings yeah. to do with the, the, the charity, what's your background? Yeah, yeah. And what you perceived and I would perceive that to be is, What's your education? What degrees do you have? Yeah. Is it all right to talk about? Yeah, that? yeah. Tell us what that done to you. Or, like, my response to you was, you have the best qualification in the fucking room. Yeah. You have been through a bereavement. You have been through grief. No one is more qualified to start this charity than you. But yet someone was like, what's your background? What's your coffee? Have you a psychotherapy degree? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that lit you up, didn't it? With yeah, it because I was like... Is it right to ask? Yeah, because you, did you ever get like... Uh, like, like you know, you're setting up the charity. And me and Sam Dragon got a clue. Like, he just literally said, "Why well, we're going to do this. But then we, we studied. We done courses, like, regarding the charity because governance and everything else in the background. Like, we, do, we like we done this. And me and Sandra aren't counsellors. So that's when we worked with counsellors yeah. to provide the service. Like, but, yeah, and I remember you saying it to me. And you you actually made me feel better. Like, it, it's your... It, it's Sanja and I's life experience. Like, like it doesn't matter. Like, you can go to <laughs> university and do degrees and ma- masters and all. But I think because we've experienced it, we we we've lived it. Lived it. That yeah. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And tongue tied. No, that's all right. But this is the thing, right? I mean, I walked in the the, the disability sector, and people mm. like you know went through the rehab and all that. And I said, if you do this, get through your rehab, and you go back to education, you'll be the most qualified person in the room. Not only do you have the lived experience, yeah. then you have your gun and badge. You have yeah. what's known as your gun and badge, the, mm. the piece of certificate. You's you's done what you did, predicate on love. Yeah. After the pain, you went to start John charity, and then you were standing with a lot of these people that have academia. Yeah, that actually, yeah. what's your qualification? Yeah. That can be crushing for some yeah. people. Yeah. But you are atypical liberty sort of people. You're so resourceful. You're so fucking hard working mm-hmm. yeah. that you didn't stop. Yeah. That's inspiring. That's yeah. deadly shit. <laughs> Thanks. Isn't it? But there's people out there that will face that, will face like starting a new business, starting a new opportunity, and people ask them, what's your qualification? Yeah. I know. Sometimes it's not all about that, is it? Yeah. And it's good. It is good to get education. It, 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 is. it is. But it's also, I think, yeah, life experience. I, I, I do believe in that. Like, because I remember when I worked in a homeless shelter and, you know, there was girls in it. And then there w- would have been key workers. I wasn't a key worker. And, you know, you'd have the key workers there and they were from different areas, like, you know, that were outside Dublin East and they had their degrees and their masters. But, the girls, the girls have come to me to talk. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I was like from the area. I was, I was like them, and they found it a lot easier. They felt safer in your. Yeah, body. yeah, yeah, yeah. This was my point earlier. I'm going to say to you about you bridging the gap because I was doing some work for a charity around Airway. I do mm. talks, and they brought me in. I was speaking to one of the psychotherapists, and she was asking me about the pathway into therapy. How do we get yeah. these youngsters on the flats, or young ones on the flats, or where from flats? I know you're saying you need the likes of someone that probably sounds like Lisa or looks like Lisa or sounds and looks like me yeah. that they can make it feel safe for them. Yeah. Do you know, so they will come to you with a difficulty early intervention. You'll say, well, there's an opportunity here. You could do some counseling, blah, blah. Yeah. And they would say to you, do you do it? And you'll say, yeah, well, this is the benefit for me, blah, blah, blah. And same with me and same with other people. And you can bridge that gap. Like those people in the homeless centre or whatever. 
they feel safe in your company because you sound and look like them mm. and you're kind and compassionate. Yeah. So it's really important, right? Yeah. 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 What do you think has been the, the the hardest barrier for you in your organisation? What what kind of difficulties have you faced? I suppose for setting up, like, like uh, yeah, um, you know, being told, no, we, we this and that, and then also our resources as well, because currently it's just myself and Sandra, you yeah. know, uh, that run it. Uh, yeah, we have the counsellors there that, that uh, provide the counselling service, but yeah, it's just really our resources. And then like, so this is why it's so important now we're getting our own building. We, we'll be able to grow, hopefully take more staff on. Like, and yeah, just, yeah. So I think the main obstacles was, was that. In your, in, your, in your observation, in your experience from 2000 toward day into 2000, now we're in 2024, talk to us about the mental health increase in, in Jill. Has that gone up? Yeah. What's your thoughts around that? Well, when we started in 2018, I think the first year we had 65 uh, children. Now, that would have been from the Liberties and maybe around surrounding areas, Stala, Crumlin and that. Um, and then it went up and up. And then last year we, we had 125. Now we're, we're seeing an increase in play therapy more than adolescents. Um this reason I don't I don't I don't know you know what I mean I, like I can't give the answer what the increase is like mm. I know COVID affected a lot of children you know um, I do think as well like just the society we're living in with, with social media and you know having to look a certain way and, and you know this and that like I think that has affected and I think as well if you know, family, if mental health is, is at home in the family as well, it is, it is affecting the children too. Hundred percent. Yeah. And I, my same charity, I was talking to this, this psychotherapist and we were talking about this yeah. and it's, it's cool helping mm -hmm. little Mary, a little Charlie yeah. Reverend in school and giving them gratitude books and doing mindfulness and the bullying yeah. things. But if they're going home and there's in the, the, the unit, yeah. the family in the environment. Yeah. And this is no blame to parents. No. I know people ask me, what's the greatest thing we could do to help kids? Yeah. This is help the parents. Yeah. Help the single mom, help the single dad, help yeah. the un un unemployed, help the, the, yeah. the people that are struggling to hold their mortgage down, blah, blah. Help the parents because they are controlling this little environment that yeah. little Johnny or little Mary is living in. So it's really hard for the kid yeah. if he comes to your anti-bullying class or your mindfulness yeah. class or, that he's going home and and yeah, it's in the house. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And that's why we were saying we'd love to bring in family therapy. Absolutely, like think Sandra and I. Support the mum. Support the dad. Yeah, because like you, you are helping a child, but then if you're helping the child, and then there's something else going on. Like, and I don't fam family therapy with me too bias. Yeah, and like, like you know, the, my two boys have been through a lot. Like they, they've lost Shannon, and then they've lost their dad. Then you know what I mean. So. Like, they've been through a lot, yeah. you know, and like, I have to say family therapy, like, just helped us so much, like, and like, I love the bond now I have with me too, boys. Like, it, it, yeah, it's it's lovely. And again, you're, you're, you're promoting and advocating counselling for yourself yeah. and the individual, but then you're also advocating and, and clearly describing the benefits as a family. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's because it's. It's really important that if the kids coming home to this, yeah. that we're all on the same page, that everyone's yeah. doing the same work. And it's yeah. something that my family said to me, my dad, like we just brought his past and was like, mm -hmm. thanks for doing the work. You've helped us heal. Yeah. Because you know, from growing up, my ma, your bad that they weren't taught how to talk about these kind of mm -hmm. things, you know? Yeah. So then it's good for us to sit down with our kids and talk. And it is, it's breaking the chain. And I, lo and, and I do love now, like the way, we're, we're more open about mental health. And and I always remember Sandra telling me this. She says, you know, you talk to your child, like, uh, don't talk to a stranger. Then you say to your child, like, don't do drink or do drugs, don't smoke. But no one ever, like, sits down and says, like, well, uh, like, talks about the mental health. And it should be a conversation. It should, it, it should be in all families, like, you know. If you want kids, you want your children or your the people, the little people in your life. If you want them to be skillful yeah. at emotionally regulating, mm. you have to demonstrate that because yeah. they'll watch how you handle stress. Till, uh, 
watch how you handle conflict, how you yeah. handle success, how you handle, how you handle. Mm. And we have to teach them that. And how can we teach them that? We haven't been taught by the people that were yeah. in charge of us. And again, no blame. Yeah, they didn't get it. So, yeah, so right. now we have to show them that this is how you handle stress. This is how you handle bullying. And is, is, has bullying increased in schools in, in, yeah, we've seen a lot of bullying, yeah. 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 There is a lot of bullying, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the answer is to bullying. Me yeah. and Sandra were just even talking about this the other day, like, what is it? Sandra was saying, now I don't watch the soaps, but she was saying she was watching um, Coronation Street. I don't watch Nelly. Don't, do you know? Oh, oh okay. No. Um, <laughs> well, just was, just in this... case the TV license man is watching... <laughs> I don't watch telly. I don't have it. I don't have a telly. Don't what telly? Well, no, but she. I was just saying, sit there and meditate all day on. Yeah, well, she was saying as well, like you know, you can, you can do because we don't bully, and you know, and also the bullies need. We feel need help as well. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know, but, and then this Coco's Law that's after coming out that Jackie Fox done, which love her, brilliant, love her, yeah, oh, yeah brilliant, beautiful, she's love, brilliant. yeah, lo- brilliant. lovely woman, right? Um, but it's still going on. Like, like, I, I just haven't got the answer. I don't, I don't understand that. Like, I was bullied in primary. I was bullied, you know, which also affected me. But, um, I'd love to have the answers. Yeah, you know, I, it's, it's, it's a hard. One. Yeah, I, I think the big piece is to support the children. I mean, yeah. support the kid that's being bullied, mm. but also support the bully. Or yeah. the yeah. person, that's and then I, yeah. the family of the bullier and the family of it's 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 a complex. It is. It's a complex mm. equation, yeah. and it's not one that you're going to sort out anytime soon. But the one thing you could do is to be kind and compassionate to them all. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a, it's again, it's it's bringing that kid home and seeing what the environment they grew. Exactly. Because I truly believe, from someone that experienced abuse, sex abuse, violence. I believe hurt people hurt. Yeah. I know that might be hard for people to digest. No, but it is. It's interesting. Hurt. Yeah, it is. How do I know that, Lisa? Yeah. Because I hurt people. Yeah. I was hurt. I bullied people. I fucking made people's life a misery. I broke people's hearts because I was hurt. Yeah. And only now that I recognise that, I wouldn't do that again. But yeah. that's probably, that's probably a little bit hard to open up for people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because automatically people say, oh, the bully, oh, the, you know what I mean? They're like, like they automatically think they're the bad person. Yeah. But if you if you, you look at the bigger picture, you just really, really don't know what's going on for them. No, you no, know? you don't. You yeah. don't. And it's easy to, like, now here's the thing. With kids, and I, I won't speak too close to home, but I know some person has a child that has mental health difficulties. Okay. All the attention is going on the kids, mm. their behaviour, how do you fix them? No one has taken responsibility for creating or shaping that environment. Okay. Sometimes a lot of the, the attention goes on the kids yeah. or the bullier. But what about the parents, the environment? Yeah. And take the pressure off the kid, yeah. the kid being bullied or the kid bullying. Yeah. What's your thoughts around that? Yeah. I think, like, not sure. I mean, I find now, like, like, even, like, kids, the kids get angry and then their like, parents and all do say to them, wait, why are you getting angry? Don't get angry. But us as humans and all get angry. So, yeah. I mean, they're allowed to get angry. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was told that as a kid. I don't. Like, yeah, do you get what I'm saying? So, yeah. you kind of let, you have to let them, like, mm. like do that. You know, I think I went off subject there, didn't I? No, no, so, no. <laughs> it's, it's around the parents. Yeah. Uh, allowing the kids to just express, express whether they're hungry, mind. whether they're horny, whether they're happy, <laughs> whether they're thirsty. They're all the fucking same. I was having a conversation with my mom yesterday. You know, my dad had passed yeah. uh, in, in January and she said to me, I've decided. I know he says, go on, man. And she says, from tomorrow, I'm going to just either one day a week or a couple of days a week that I'm going to allow myself to cry. Yeah. She said, what? She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to, I need to get myself together. I have to stop this crying because it's not fair on your dad that has passed. It's not fair on you. Like, no. I love you too much to allow you to do that madness. I said, i tell you what I'll do for you. I said, pick a day where you'll be kind and compassionate to yourself all day long. Yeah. I see that may be missing. Yeah. And she goes, really? And I said, what do you think? Yeah. He goes, I don't know any day that I do that. Yeah. I said, but yeah, you want to give yourself a hard time about crying about falling apart. I said, you never cried in all the time I've known you. 
your mother had passed away years ago. I said, did you ever grieve? And she goes, no, I never. And now she's coming along, her husband that she was married to 50 years, and she's going to give herself a, 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 a task of not crying. Ah, you cry when you want to cry. So yeah. this is the environment yeah. she grew up in, that crying was a vulnerability. You don't cry, it's a weakness. Yeah. Now her husband died, mm. the only person she's ever loved. Yeah. And she's now putting herself under the ringer, not crying. Yeah, that's the generation yeah. that we've been mm. real boy. What yeah. you, what's your thoughts around that? Yeah, and I think that generation as well. They 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 didn't understand mental health, so so they couldn't teach it. Like you you do see it in the in the older generation, even like they they, they I think they still don't understand mental health. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I just yeah, it's a completely different. Like, like my ma said that she's not going to cry at the funeral. She's not going to let anyone uh, see her crying. And he says, ma. But why? Like, why? why because like, she, cause she perceives that as a, as a weakness. I'm falling apart. I told, I told your dad yeah. that I wouldn't fall apart. Mm. And I said, me, that wouldn't want you to do that. No, she show her emotions. She didn't. She, she said, I'm not going to let anyone. It's only natural to cry. Like, yeah. 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 She's, she's trying to control this. I said, yeah. ma, it's like trying to control your breathing. I said, try stop breathing for a few days. See how you get on. <laughs> And she says, what do you mean? I said, yeah. same with the crying, same yeah. with sweating, same with fucking yeah. blinking your eyes. Is you can't, your body just needs to yeah. do what it needs to. Bless her. Yeah. Bless her. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. my ma didn't think that telling me or my brothers that they loved them was something that we had to do. We grew up in that. Yeah. So she, yeah. And they weren't told they were loved. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And then we come along with our mental health stuff and it seems like we're battering them or giving them a hard time. Yeah. 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 Difficult. Yeah. But what do we do? We be compassionate, right? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. What's the What's the plan for Shannon's hopeline going forward? Um, just yeah, keep up with the counselling service. We also do the teens fitness and wellness as well. I'm 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 very passionate as well about um, like uh, fitness and nutrition with mental health too. So that's something that that really want to bring in. You know, get better with Chris. He was meant to yeah. come on your podcast. Yeah. Uh, we'll get him on. Yeah. Will you talk him into it? I will, yeah, I will. Now Chris have been called out. <laughs> um so um yeah, he does the teens where he talks about nutrition. You like I do like one thing that's helped me through the years as well, me mental health is the running. And then the the fitness, of course you still have to work on other things as well, but it's it it's a big thing I feel for mental health too. You know, um so that come in and then, yeah, we've our social enterprise then, which we're open to do, like a takeaway coffee shop and, you know, the funds from that will go in to help run Shannon's Hope line, you know. Uh, we just keep, we hate keep asking for money. <laughs> That's what I know. Give us more money. Yeah. Give us more money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you not bring a bag and ball with no, you? No, no, no. So, like, we do. Like, I have to say, like, the community that we have, is, is brilliant. They're always doing something for us, you know. We, yeah. We'd be lost without them. And I mean that, like even, even yesterday with the run, like that wasn't about charity. That running club yesterday, and then uh, Paul Mooney down from Meath Street went around, got prizes. Uh, they done a raffle down afterwards after the running club and and raised money yeah, for us, like for Sharon's Hope Line. Yeah, yeah, and like uh, Noel Steli and stuff like that. He always does the book of for us. You have John and the Larkin, always big supporters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And then Liberty Inc. and Francisy. Like, we, we've we just, we, we've been so, so lucky. Yeah, you know? it, it, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's deserving because it's resonance. Yeah. What you put out, you get back. You yeah. do, it's predicated on love. You didn't yeah. do this to make money. You've done it for, for to help people mm -hmm. to support the cause of Shannon. Yeah, so it just comes back to you. Yeah. It's resonance, as they say. Yeah. You said to me there a minute ago that you have a kind of a, a ritual or you, what you do to, to to stay on top of things, whether it be a mental health. Tell mm -hmm. us, what, what do you do? What's what's your what's your go-to things for keeping you? What I mean? I mean. Yeah, yeah. And all that that keeps you healthy and well and, and looking so well and happy. <laughs> so like, how do, you, how do we become as happy as Lisa? Um, yeah. Mark, you give us a pen. I need to write this shit down. <laughs> Like, come on, um, let's go. No, I just train. I mean, I did we we routine is five o'clock up, gym, training. Um many days a week. I go to gym three mornings a week and then we yeah, out run run as well. I have two days rest day. Yeah. yeah. So I take two days off, yeah. Um and yeah, the the then Shannon's hope line, it's just helping people and you know what I mean? It it just 
being able to do that makes makes me feel happy. Um, yeah, and just having me be up for family. And do you pray? I do pray. You do. Is that a big yeah. part of your community? Yeah. About that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I pray for. I did. I have to say, when Shannon passed, uh, I remember uh, when I seen her lying in the bed, and the first place I ran to was the church in, in Crumlin Hospital, and. Um, I just walked in and I screamed and I said, there's, there's no God's like, like, how, 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 how could you do this? Like, you know, and I was just full of anger. And then um, I remember there was a poor man at the back. He must have been praying for his child, bless him. And it was only a few months later, but your man looked terrified at the back of the church because I just lost it in the church. And I, I just always was amazed, like, that was the first place I ran to. I ran away from everyone, like, just the church. And it was six months later then, uh, yeah, I, I kind of had a bit of a breakdown. And then I went and got counselling. And I got my faith back. But, yeah, I, I pray all the time. I was like, me candles. I love the peace of a church. Here. Yeah. Uh, when there's nobody in it. Me too. Yeah, and you just go it's in. And me three church. At John's Lane, I like to sit in, yeah. You go to the posh one. <laughs> and there used to be actually a church in the Ilex Centre as well. <gasps> yeah, under the library they used to be. Is so there? Uh, Yeah, in the middle of all, like if you're going out shopping, it's gone now. I was going mad, I went, and I used to sit in there as well. I'll start petition to get that. Back. Yeah. But, um, cards. Yeah, it just gives me peace. I have my faith and um, yeah, it makes me happy. I was in Mead Street Church. I do the same as you. I go in yeah. just for the peace. My coffee be getting made up in Catherine's. Shout out to Catherine's Bakery and Mead yeah, Street. Yeah, Catherine, yeah. So I was just make coffee. Yeah. So I, I said, make me two coffees for me and Sean. And I was over yeah. in the church. I just go over and have a little sit down. But sometimes I lie down. So yeah. I was lying on the bench down one day. And this homeless fella come up and tapped me on the foot. And he was giving me a sandwich. He thought that I was a homeless fella as well. He said, here, get it. Yeah, it was lovely. I was in there just getting a little bit of a piece, lying yeah. on my back, having a rest. Yeah. He came up and was offering me a sandwich. Yeah. So I don't know if he was being nice or I just looked like a homeless person. Just bless him. Yeah, bless him. He was looking after you. Looking after you. It's yeah. cool. But that's yeah. what Misha does. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever get signs or ask for signs from Shannon? Is that something that you, you, you do? Um, yeah, I do. I do ask for signs. Like I, I'm a big thing. So Sandra got me kind of into the angel numbers. Sandra would be more... She was the one with the signs and stuff and uh, the angel numbers and seeing the angel numbers and kind of taking them in and stuff and looking up the meanings. Yeah, I do. Like, I'm I'm a firm believer, like, because me, like, me faith is so strong and I, I, and I feel like we're, where are we? And I know Shannon is with us all the time. Like, Do you believe she's here right now? Oh, I do. I believe. Yeah, yeah. she's here. Yeah. She's here. I, yeah. I feel. I do believe as well, like, you know, when, when when you want something and then it doesn't work out, that, okay, that's not meant to be. As as before, I used to be like, oh, why didn't that, that, that happen? I just haven't. But now I know, right, that, that, that that's done now. There's something better there. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like, maybe, and, that's something. And that's a great thing to have because, like, you know, oh, well, it, it, this didn't work out. Okay, well, then that's not, my, that wasn't meant to be. That wasn't meant to be. And that's what... That's the intellectual mind trying to control yeah. the three-dimensional, the 3D link breadth height. Yeah. That's not how life works. We yeah. have to surrender. Yeah. As hard as it may seem for someone to take this in, Shannon's existence on this mm. earth and that time mm. was to do what was meant yeah. to happen. We yeah. used to start this, that she sacrificed her being to be here. That's fucking hard. But out of that dark came something beautiful. Yeah. And she's here now yeah. Yeah. full of love yeah. and proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. I think it's so. my yeah. emotion. You are? I get emotional there. Yeah. Tell- but that's that's unusual for us, isn't it, to get emotional, yeah. you know, it's not something that we were we were encouraged to do. Yeah. Talk about our anger. My ma didn't see me crying till I was forty forty four. Oh did she know? No, I'm sure we see me as a baby yeah. crying. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, I'm glad, yeah. Yeah. Thank God. You're an incredible. That was yeah. So is there anyone that you would like to give a shout out to before we wrap up? A shout out to uh, my inspiring sister Sandra. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, just everyone that kind of has helped us along the way and has been there for us and has believed in us. And yeah, and a big shout out to the Liberties Running Club. I love them all. That was a great bunch of people, I have to say. 
I love working with David, Jenny and Keith and uh, just the people in it is amazing. And uh, yeah, just thank you. I'm so, so proud of you. As a friend, as a human, you're an incredible woman. It's very hard to get a coffee with you because you're always running out doing shit. <laughs> I think it'd be easy to get a coffee with fucking Mickey, Michael D. Higgins or something. <laughs> I know I see you read I'm not that bad. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am. This is sorry, talking. sorry. And he lives with you. Even when you go, she's sitting there. <laughs> oh, no, nah, look, honestly, I don't want to, to embarrass you anymore, but you're an incredible woman. You and Sandra inspire me no end. The way you have operated, the way you go about your life, you're so fucking selfless. Mm. You're selfless. Charity is the most selfless thing we can do, and it's incredible. So I'm delighted. I'm delighted for the runner club, Shannon's Hope Line, to be our friend, to watch you from a distance over the last 24 years. That sounds weird. I'm watching it. I get, <laughs> I get, Stalker. I could see it. <laughs> no, but to see like our boat, our evolution. No, but you're, you, you're doing great too. I'm very proud of you too, man. Yeah, and isn't it? No, I, and I mean that. And and I believe, and I, I like the, the, the running club. I'm so fucking proud of David, yeah. and Keith, and Jenny, and you, and what it's done for the community. Yeah. And it, and it helps us grow and we can do more of that for people in our community. Like yeah. I love seeing someone in my area do well. Yeah. And I see well, it. I'm so proud. See. Yeah, it's great to see because everything that's going on in the world and all, it's just it it just lovely to see having a community yeah. like that. This is what I believe to be the, the way to go about it. I create peace in me, I create peace in my community. I create peace in the community, it creates peace in our community. Yeah. And we, we look after ourselves and then it just resonates right out into because you embody what the Liberty Running Club is, you embody what Shannon's hope line, you just want to help and be kind and go about your life. And that just is infectious to everybody. It's incredible. It's deadly. So let's do more of that. Right. So oh, that's yes. a wrap. That's Unless you want to do a bit more crying. No. <laughs> Thanks for uh, being so vulnerable and being so honest. It's yeah. it's deadly. You're, you're such an inspiration. And, and I hope there's women and men out there that see it and you inspired them because that's what this is all about. Stories to have the power to inspire. Really? You up the flats. The butterflies are gone. Are the butterflies yeah, gone? They're gone. Yeah. No, you. No, I actually enjoyed that. It was lovely. It was lovely. Yeah. yeah. Deadly. Right. So that's a wrap. Uh, I want to thank. If you watch and listen, please share this with family and friends. Uh, get Shannon's Hope Line out there. All of my interviews since 2018 have all been sponsored. Shannon's Hope Line, they've been at the bottom of all our work and we just fucking are so grateful to be part of your journey. Noel Royley from Rooney Media Graphics who helped me so much start my business. It's all about remembering the people that have been good to you. And now I'm linked with podcastdublin.ie. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast or you want help editing or training or want to use this amazing studios, please give them a shout. Matt is the absolute business and so is Stefano. So that's it. That's a wrap. Mind your little self. You up the flats. Thank you. Thanks to Larkin over there, <laughs> taking pictures and keeping an eye on us. Thanks to Matt behind the camera. You're an amazing dude. It's lovely to work with you. Have a whopper day. You up the flats. <laughs>